Welcome to Granny's Country Cooking, and I am Granny, and I am so glad you're here with us today. We are going to be making a very special cake. It is called Granny's Butter Pound Cake, and it's a recipe handed down to me from probably the 50s, maybe, and maybe in the 60s. Very, very good, very simple, very easy to make. And also, this is a video especially for a nice, wonderful lady named Mary Lou. And I will tell you more about her story in just a little bit. We will get everything set up and be right back with you. Thank you. Okay, we are back and ready to get started. And as you can see, I had a little towel over the bowl. And the reason why is the butter that is in the recipe had to be warmed. And if you notice, I have a little six-month-old puppy right here. Okay, we are back. And we are going to get started on making our butter pound cake. Now, usually in other recipes, I will tell you to start your oven about now so that it will be heated up when you put your cake in the oven. This one is a totally different kind of cake. You will put it into a cold oven and then turn it to 325. And I will tell you more about that in just a minute. As you can see, I have my bowl covered and I will let you see why. I have butter, two sticks of butter warming up. Very important because it needs to be soft so that you can mash the the sugar into it. Also, <clears throat> the eggs that go into it need to be room temperature. It does make a difference. Okay, let me go over some of these ingredients that we're going to put into the cake, butter pound cake. We have two sticks of butter. That's the unsalted butter. We have also butter Crisco. Now, the old-timer cooks would use lard, and I have, tra I have uh, decided to use the better Crisco because it's a little bit healthier, but I know lard was delicious, so we're going to use better Crisco. We have sea salt, five eggs, we have sugar, regular sugar, and we have regular flour. You don't have to go to town to get anything special, just regular flour. Then we have Baba Grand's vanilla we'll put in. Then also we have evaporated milk that will go in this. Uh, also, a lot of people can use the electric mixer and that's just fine, don't worry about it. But today I choose to use just the spoons and the whisk to give it the fluffiness in there. Also, I wanted to mention that this cake will make a big size cake. So, I have two pans. This one is called a bunt pan, and the old timers used to call this a tube pan. Now, this pan, I honestly have no idea how old it is. It is, can be ancient, I don't know. And we've been using it for many, many years, and this we're going to use today. But you can also use the bunt pans, okay? Now, if you want to have some cake to eat now, and then some in the deep freeze for later, you can make two of these kind of a loaf pans. You can make two out of these and then you can put one in the freezer and eat on the first one. So you have different variations of that. Okay. Now the first thing we're going to do is we have our two warm sticks of butter. We are going to add half a cup of butter Crisco to this. Now a little secret that I found out is that if you wet the cup with a little bit of water, it makes the Crisco come out easier. Now if you notice, I have got my apron on now, have my hair pulled back, 
and then clean hands and that way you get your hair out of the way but I love an apron because I can play in the food and it doesn't hurt anything also for new cooks I like to have a little bucket of hot soapy water with a cap full of bleach and whenever you get through with something you just put it in the bucket dump it in there and wash it later and it's almost totally done okay we have gotten our cup wet we're going to put butter crisco and i used to be real messy with butter crisco or just regular crisco and i've finally gotten a little bit better with it and i like to use a knife and as you can see this is a half of a cup and you take it and you put it into this half a cup measure now you want to make sure that you press down and get all of the air bubbles out we are going to get this and make sure that it's a full cup half a cup of Crisco yes you can use the white Crisco but I just like a little bit more flavor to it and the old timer ladies that taught me how to cook they would use uh, shortening uh, or most of them would use lard which is okay and a lot of on their farms it's called rendering they would render their own uh, pigs and they would have their own lard that they would make themselves and so they had plenty of lard now we're putting the butter Crisco into the butter and as you can see with the water it just comes right straight out now I'm going to set this off to the side and this one off to the side put this lid back on and now we're going to do this and it's called creaming what you're doing is mixing the butter and the Crisco together and I want to let you know that you may hear something or see a little puppy face because my six month old puppy is right here at my feet with me while I'm making the cake and she loves to help me cook and I think she thinks there might be little pieces that drop in the floor sometimes so she's right here if you hear her we may have to stop for a second but we are going to cream this together now I'm going to show you what it looks like and what I'm doing is taking a nice big spoon I'm using the back of the spoon right now and we are creaming it together mixing it together you're mixing that butter and the shortening the Crisco and one of the reasons why it's better room temperature is that that will make a smooth consistency so if you're going to be making this cake on the weekend or something uh, set it out that morning put a little towel over the bowl and you will have it already perfect in just a few minutes okay now it's just almost totally mixed and the butter Crisco is kind of yellow so it's kind of hard to tell which one is which but it's getting all beautifully mixed together I just love to cook and I love to feed the, the more people that I have to cook for the more fun it is when I was growing up in our community it was really interesting uh, in a farming community and our little town we had German people and Czechoslovakian people and a lot of those ladies taught me how to cook this is a spatula so I'm going to scrape this off and get it back down in and make sure it's mixed up really good and these wonderful people beautiful ladies taught me how to cook so many things my elderly aunts they were in their 80s and 90s and they were from the late 1800s to the early 1900s era so they were raised up in cooking only just regular natural growing their own food and they cooked only just regular basic things and that's why I love having this YouTube show is and videos 
and channel is so that I can teach you how to make things basic without having to go to town or without having to get a lot of mixes. But you can make your things from just basic, and a lot of people call it from scratch. You don't have to have a lot of mixes. Now this is ready to go, as you can see. Now we're going to add three cups of sugar. Three cups. This is the cup size. It's larger. We are going to measure the three cups. This is one. I have a far, fairly large pantry that I keep my basic supplies the big bulk supplies and when my little containers seem to run low I run back to my big pantry and load it up again and uh, I buy products maybe 50 pounds of sugar at a time or 50 pounds of, of flour at a time this is number three okay now my hands are a little bit grungy so I'm going to rinse them Alright, and I'm on my apron. That's what I love. I have a nice big apron. I love it. Now we are going to cream this together. And as you see in just a minute, it will be absolutely beautiful. And I'm still using the back of the spoon. You can use any bowls that you want. Just have a nice big size so you have plenty room to play. This one is a nice big size. Now some people can have plastic bowls, uh, the metal stainless steel bowls, uh, glass bowls, Pyrex bowls, whatever you have on hand. You don't have to buy anything special. We are going to mix this all together. And it is coming together very nicely. It's so much fun to cook because it's just like playing. And then the fun thing is you get to eat what you cook. I've had some friends ask me, what do you do with all the food you cook on your videos? And I laugh and I say, we eat it. <laughs> and we do. And uh, in some of the videos I have, you might have seen the uh, holiday cookies, butter holiday cookies. And for, for just me and my husband, I may make anywhere from six to 12 dozen a week because they are absolutely delicious. And they're tiny, they're crunchy, they're wonderful, and they go with coffee very, very well. All right, now we just about got this creamed, and I will show you. Get all the sugar besides. Now, one thing about this recipe, if somebody has a, a salt, Problem. This recipe only uses one fourth of a teaspoon of salt in the whole cake. So that's very, very good for some people. Alright, we are getting there and I will show you what this looks like. Alrighty, now it is creamed butter in with the sugar. Now we are going to mix one egg at a time. Now remember the eggs are supposed to be room temperature. It does tend to do different. I remember my elderly aunt telling me when I would make this cake or she would make this cake, she said, now have everything room temperature. It'll mix a lot better and it does. So here we go. I like to use the brown eggs, but you can use any eggs you want. But I like these because they have a little bit better flavor. Now there we're going to go with one. Now what I'm going to do, I didn't do it at this moment, but I will, is I'm going to get a separate bowl to break the eggs into because sometimes you have shell and it's hard to find them. So let me get that little bowl. Here's a little cereal bowl we're going to use. And I love having you here with me. 
It's so fun, it's like having a friend come to visit. And while I'm mixing these eggs, I'll tell you a little bit about my friend, Mary Lou. She was telling me one day, I gave her a business card about the YouTube channel, and she was so excited, and she said, I have a question. She said, my mother-in-law passed away many years ago. And she said she had a special cake that she cooked. And all of us sisters and children lost the recipe. And she said, let me explain it to you and maybe you'll know what the cake is. And I, she did. She explained it to me. And it sounds identical to this cake right here. And I know that this cake recipe has been in my family at least from the 50s. So this might be what she's looking for. And she said that her husband missed his mother's cakes. And if she can remake his mother's cakes, that would be such a blessing. So this is for you, Mary Lou. I hope it will work for you. Okay, that was one egg. And now we're going to get another egg. And we're going to break it into the little bowl, as you can see. Now that way, I, I tell my grandkids, that way you can see if there is any shell, and there isn't. Now remember when we first started adding the eggs, I said just one at a time, and then mix it one at a time. So we're going to do, it takes a little while, but on this cake, you wouldn't want to be in a hurry anyway. It's fun to make, and you would just want to enjoy it. And yes, you can use an electric mixer, but I love doing things by hand. I'm more of the old-fashioned cook, of course, and that's why I like to do things by hand. But you can use a mixer. And it is really coming together really pretty. I'll show you in just a second what it looks like. It looks similar to what it did while ago, but it's starting to come together a little bit better. Oh, right. Now we're going to do the third egg. Break it into the bowl. Make sure we don't get any of the shells. In some recipes, I like to mix the egg up in the bowl, but this one is okay. It just helps to, to get it mixed up and get the sugar starting to dissolve a little bit there. Another reason why I like the brown eggs is because they tend to have more of a yellow yolk and a yellow coloring, and it makes things so pretty, as well as a better flavor. get this all mixed up and I'm not sure if you can see her but my little puppy is laying right at my feet she's six months old now and she is loves to be in the kitchen with mama this is coming together really really pretty okay we have two more eggs here's another one a little messy, but I love the aprons. Alrighty, here we go. I remember watching my elderly aunt make this cake. And oh my goodness, I love watching her cook. When I was growing up, in the small community, and all us little kids were in school, of all things, most of those little ladies that we knew that were amazing cooks, including my elderly aunt, cooked in the school lunchroom for all grades. We did have separate individual areas for the grades, but they all came together to eat. And every single day, we had homemade food, just like I'm making. Had homemade hot rolls, 
absolutely the best food in the world, and you didn't have any kid complaining about their school lunches when I was growing up out of this world. Absolutely wonderful. Now, I will let you see. And it is starting to come together and looking really nice. All right. Now we have one more egg. One more egg. This one I didn't break very good, <laughs> but I still didn't get any shell in there. Alrighty, here we go. Now I'm almost, I'm going to put this in my little bucket. I'm almost ready to get to the whip stage. It's a little hard to do, 
but it does help by doing it this way and see you kind of make a mess but it's okay that's one of the reasons why I love cooking is because you can get nice and messy in the kitchen now the excess I'm going to dump into the trash I didn't have a chance to get any around the middle so I'm going to take my fingers and just do it a little bit like this and then we'll dump the excess again it takes a little while to get these things prepared and so if you're going to be making a cake I usually have this done before I get started but today I wanted to show you how I wanted you to see how to do this because there's a lot of instructions that people forget to show you or tell you how so we are going to dump the excess now we are going to put this pan out of the way now remember I normally would have the oven heating but today it's going to be a cold oven oh right now we are undegreased I think so we are moving this out of the way we are going to get back with our cake batter. Now, remember when I said a while ago, it's going to be alternate, and I'll show you how to do that. Now, in another video, you dip, level, and pour. Not in this one. This one, see, a dip, level, and pour is dipping and doing this. This recipe is going to be different. That's why you need to be real careful when you read recipes. This is three cups, so I'm going to dig right in. Let me get this a little closer where you can see. I'm going to dig right in, use my finger. I'm not going to push down, but I'm just going to rake it off a little bit. And I know many of you, we're going to have three cups, many of you are very very good cooks and so if I tend to go too slow or explain too much please forgive me but it is for I have a lot of brand new cooks that have never been in the kitchen before and so I'm kind of showing them a little bit step at a time three cuts now see we got rounded so we're just going to tap it and kind of scrape it off there's three Okay, now we'll move this out of the way. One fourth teaspoon of salt, and I use sea salt. The reason why I do is it has a better flavor, and it's, uh, I think it's a little healthier, supposed to be, but you can use even less and still have good flavor. So, one fourth. One fourth is a little bitty one. I even have men that are wanting to learn to cook that haven't had the chance to be in the kitchen. So I'm trying to take my time and show kind of slowly how to do these steps. Now this is going to be one of the steps. The next is the milk. We're using evaporated milk. Any brand is fine. You measure to one cup, not one can because one can is more than one cup. So you want one cup, okay? Now we're going to add, and I use Mexican vanilla. This is Baba Grant's, and you can find it on the internet. Baba Grant's vanilla. Mexican vanilla is the very, very best. Now in this recipe, it sounds like a lot. Three tablespoons, okay? The tablespoon is the biggest one, so we're going to do three. We're going to put it into the milk. There's one. to 
take a little leather spatula and kind of stir that. Now, whenever you do alternate, you do one of a little and mix, then you add another one and mix. And it sounds unusual, but you want to end with the flour, and it does make a different texture. Okay, now as you can see, instead of the spoon, I have my whisk. And you can see the texture. This is still the eggs, the butter, and sugar, and Crisco. Now we're going to add the milk first, and we're going to go kind of slow. So we're going to pour in just a little bit, and we're going to mix it carefully. You don't want to go too fast. Even with a mixer, uh, you don't want to just sling it all over the table. That's easy to do. I do it a lot, accidental. Okay. Now this cake, if you've ever made cakes before, now we're going to do some flour. This cake does not have any rising, doesn't have anything poof in it. So your mixing is what makes it fluffy. Now some cakes will have baking powder, uh, maybe some baking soda, and that's what makes the cake rise. This one does not. This one has the, the spoon is what makes it fluffy. Alright, now we are getting this mixed up. And my first inclination is to stick my finger in and taste it, but I'm not going to. If my grandkids were here, they would be trying to get their fingers in it. Okay, now alternating the milk. Okay. And be real, real careful because it's easy to sling. And the reason why you end with the flour is because it has a different texture. And you will see when you get to that point that it has a different texture to it. As you can tell by doing this by hand, our grandmothers and aunts uh, and some of our uncles that cooked and grandfathers had strong muscles because you use your arms in making homemade breads and everything. You use your, your hands and your arms. The texture is getting beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Here goes some more milk. Alternate back and forth. And my little puppy has decided to come in and sit at my feet again. So you may hear her or see her, I don't know. She loves to come in here and be with me when I cook. And this is getting beautiful. As you can see. And as you can see, it makes a large amount. Okay, here we go. I told my friend, Mary Lou, that if this isn't exactly what her mother-in-law was cooking, then we will keep hunting in some of my old recipes and see what we can find. But um, it sounded just like this butter pound cake, what she would make. I almost needed a bigger bowl, didn't I? Oh, this is beautiful. I'm going to get the little spatula out now we're getting some on the sides. 
scrape it off right there. Now we're going to do the milk. As you can see, we're almost getting to the end of the milk. And this is a little bit soupy, so you want to be careful and not, not stir it out of the bowl. Now, after this comes out of the oven, we're going to put it in the oven, and it's going to cook for about one hour, maybe a little more, until it's golden on the top. But it depends on your oven, 325, that's very low, and then at least one hour plus, maybe 10, 15 minutes extra. You can see that it's getting really fluffy. Okay, and then we're going to do some more flour. But remember, we're going to save a little bit to end it. And it makes sense, you would think, that surely you could just dump it all in there and mix it up, and you probably could. But it might not work out very well, and it might not taste as good as you wanted it to. But if you do it alternate, like the recipe wants you to, then you will have an absolutely delicious cake. And your family and friends will be raving over this butter pound cake. I'm not sure why they first started calling it a pound cake. Maybe because it's heavy. <laughs> This is really, really getting pretty. Okay, now we're going to put the last of the milk in. Okay, that's the last of the milk and the vanilla. Put that in our little bucket. And remember, you will be putting this into a cold oven.
So you will have to, to be watching for the apple fried pies. I got some on my hand. That's won't hurt. Oh goodness, this is beautiful. I'll show you in just a second. Let me get some of this off the whisk and it is done. We are going to pour it into our pan and put it in the cold oven. Now I'm going to scrape the sides just to make sure we have everything all on the sides. Okay, let me show you how beautiful this is. Beautiful batter. Now, let me kind of wipe the counter up a little bit and then you can help me pour it into the pan. Looks kind of messy, but it will work. Okay, here we go. I'll scoot it back where you can see it. Okay, hold it in your arms and start letting it kind of pour in. Very thick, but very delicious. Now, it will start running around the side by itself, so you shouldn't have to stop and scoot it around. I remember my aunt was similar to a grandmother, and I remember watching her do this so many, many, many times. She did love her butter pound cake, and we all did too. We are getting it all in. This is another reason why if you have long hair like I do, you want to get it out of the way because I have had my hair in the food. That is a mess. Now I might be able to get a little bit more out. We will try to get as much as we can. My husband would want me to leave as much in the bowl as I could. We will try to get as much out as we can. Okay, just about it. Now you will have a little bit more on one side so you can take it and make it even. Kind of stir it around or just scrape it around. Just move it around with your little spatula, it won't hurt. Try to make it as even as you can. And really, this is beautiful. It's so fun to create pretty things, too. And I will show you. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to put this in the cold oven for 325 for at least one hour, maybe one hour and 15 minutes. So, I will be back with you in just a little while. Thank you. Okay, we are back and the cake has been in the oven one hour and 15 minutes. And it is absolutely beautiful. Look at this beautiful cake. Now, what we're going to do is let it get completely cold before we turn it out of the pan. So we have to wait before we, we turn it over to get it out of the pan. We have to wait until it's cold. Then we're going to make some frosting and we're going to drizzle it over the top and it's going to be beautiful. I can't wait to see this when we get it out. So it may be another uh, few minutes, hour or so until it's cold. But we'll be right back whenever it's ready. Okay, we'll be seeing you in just a little bit. Okay, we are back and our cake is absolutely wonderful. It's cooled down. There's a teensy bit warmth, but it's okay. And as you can see, it's beautiful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it 
and then flip it back. So let me get the top. Now this is another cooling rack and we are going to place it on here. Now hopefully this will be an easy flip. Okay. Now we will see how this comes out perfect. Yay! We always want it to be perfect. Now, I have a beautiful little cake lid and pan that we're going to put the plate on. Now, you can make the cake stay this direction if you want, but this time I think it'll be pretty to have the pretty top. So we're going to flip it. Now the plate is like this. I turn it upside down and I put it as close to the center as I can. And then we flip it over. And then we have this beautiful, absolutely beautiful cake. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make up a quick little frosting. Now this frosting is going to be the dribble kind that you dribble all around the sides. So I'm going to scoot this cake over for a minute. This is one of my little old tiny from my family passed down cake covers. I'm going to make up a quick, this is a kind of a dribble kind of frosting. Now also this is glaze that I use on the fried pies as well as you can even use this with donuts. So this is going to be two cups of powdered sugar but what you want to do is you want to sift it because powdered sugar has lumps in it. So let's get the two cups. We are going to, I think I'm going to set this inside here. Make it a little bit easier. Now I'm just digging in and then I'm going to take my fingers and scrape it around like this. See there's all kinds of lumps. So we're going to get those sifted out in a minute, okay? Here's one cup. Alrighty. Now here is another cup. As you can tell, this is just regular powdered sugar. I do buy powdered sugar and regular sugar and flour in bulk, but you can get just some small bags at the grocery store or wherever and it'll be just fine. This is two cups. Okay, that's what we need right there. Now we're going to sift it into this bowl and powdered sugar is a little bit stiff, a little dry. It's a little bit harder to sift but it still works. It's okay. You are going to have some lumps. So what we're going to do going to kind of tap it and we're going to get this and we're going to sift it and if you make a little mess don't worry it cleans up easy. I have thoroughly enjoyed making this beautiful cake with you guys. And I'm starting to hear from many of you so be sure and write to me and I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can contact me through the comments under the video and I will answer everyone. You can also contact me with Gmail. It's Grandy's Country Cooking at Gmail. Now I'm, what I'm doing is gently mashing the lumps that are in there. You don't want to make a hole in the sifter but you just gently mash the lumps. Okay, kind of tap it. And it's kind of going everywhere, but that's all right. Now, what we're going to do, we're not going to necessarily, excuse me, measure the milk. We're going to pour the milk in and vanilla until it's kind of a runny consistency. Hold on just a second. I get my nice mixing spoon here. Now, we're going to pour this in and if it stays a little thick we're just going to keep adding some milk until it gets runny and I'll show you what it looks like. 
And if you have a little bit of this left over, you can put it in a lid closed container and put it in the refrigerator. And you can always use it for whatever you would like to put on. This is not the kind of frosting that you would use to spread. This is a poor kind of frosting. Now I will show you that it is just kind of a runny texture. And there's a few little lumps, so we'll stir them out. Bye. 